Oh my gosh, what are we doing? I don't know. Hey everyone, this is Travis with another Whiny Parent Podcast, and I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Survivor, episode 6, from Winners at War. What a crazy episode. So fun to watch. Uh, I can't believe the sequence of events that played out. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of touch on a few of those highlights. Uh, I'll make a prediction. Uh, and first I'll start off with a draft update, which my team has a ray of hope. Um, I finally broke out of the negative point range, uh, and I earned two points this week. Uh, Tyson earned a point for having the most confessionals this week. And Denise, who correctly played an idol, also earns a point. So that bumps me up from minus one to one point. And Megan is holding strong at four points. So uh, based off how the season's gone already, that's a big swing for me. Um, I am down to five players while Megan still has seven. Um, with three of my players being on the same team. So... <laughs> Um, Jeremy, Denise, and Tony, uh, have all three of those and they're on the same team and, uh, what they show next week happens again, I'll be probably losing another player. Uh, so that's a draft update. Uh, I want to jump right into highlights and I loved that whole scene between Sandra and Denise, the conversation was amazing to watch. Uh, you have this move from Sandra to sell her idol uh, because she's going to be safe and everyone else did vote for Denise, so there's logic to what her plan was. Um, would it have made sense for her to use that idol herself to protect Denise? Maybe, and I mean, I think everyone, it's easy to second guess what happens. Personally, I would have to imagine that a lot of people wouldn't have given away the idol. Maybe they just would have played it on themselves since they were, it was a, it had an expiration date. So Sandra had to play it at that tribal. So. You know, she could have played for herself, but she was trying to earn fire tokens, and that was her goal. Um, and so the back and forth, um, Denise kind of, you know, weighing the decision and, you know, kind of bartering for it. And uh, so that was, I, I love that scene. Um, and I think when you, the transaction was complete, it kind of blew my mind because there were so many different outcomes that could have happened. Denise could have stuck with Sandra and kept it and, you know, then, you know, she would have voted out Jeremy. Um, and if I'm talking out loud right now, so the assumption must have been that Sandra believed Denise would vote out, would be the vote for Jeremy because everyone else voted for Denise. Um, so that, I think that's a little surprising that, um, yeah, I guess when you, I guess if you feel like you're in a good place and you're trusting someone else to be the one vote, against someone else. I guess that makes sense. Um, I guess I would have imagined Sandra wanting to have a safety net where she maybe threw an additional vote at Jeremy too, just to be sure. 
But I mean, if she's giving away her idol, she must be having a level of trust with the niece, which says a lot about the niece. Um, or it says that maybe Sanders just didn't think that there was going to be anything underhanded with this exchange. Um, so I'll move on from there, go to the second highlight, which is Denise playing the idol on Jeremy. Was it needed? No. Four votes for Denise and the one lone vote for Sandra. But the effect made me jump out of my seat. <laughs> I, I was excited to know that Jeremy was going to be safe. Uh, you know, I often said that Jeremy is possibly my all-time favorite player. And, he, you know, he was my number one pick in this year's draft with me and Megan. He's my winner pick. Um, it just seems like an all-around good dude. I like the way he plays. And um, so, and you could see when Denise played her idol for herself, or the idol that Sandra gave her, you could see that Jeremy was, like, stressed. Maybe regretting the fact that he didn't play his advantage. Um, the advantage, of course, the uh, safety without power. So he has to, he has the right to leave a tribal council before the votes are cast. But because they already voted, he can't use it. So clearly he was uh, upset in that moment. And when she sat down, it looks like Jeff is about to read the vote. She's, Denise says, can I have another minute? She pulls out the idol she originally had, played it on Jeremy. That was amazing. I think it's like my favorite moment ever in Survivor. And that's be that's because I feel like like you get personally you know, you just have these this interest to become attached to these people who are playing such a dynamic and crazy social experiment uh of a game. Uh so I I was floored by that whole scene, uh, the conversation leading up to the tribal council. Um, and no, did she need to play it? No. In hindsight, obviously, didn't need to play it. She could still have an idol. Jeremy would have been in the game. But you don't know that going into tribal council. She did not know that. So basically, she guaranteed that her alliance member was going to be around for another day. And that type of move, despite not having the idol now, it, it should, if it hadn't already been there, solidify her place with Jeremy at her side. So, yes, Jeremy wrote down Denise's name, but there have been many situations where people are in a tight spot and it's either themselves or or their partner in crime. And they end up voting for each other, which basically nulls their votes. But it's basically their only way to stay in the game is to vote for the other player. So I don't take as much out of Jeremy voting for Denise uh, because Denise is clearly on top of her game. She's playing things close to the vest to where only a couple people knew about her idol. And so. Jeremy didn't know she had an idol, so he was thinking, okay, it's either her or me, and I don't have any other choice but to put a vote on Denise. So, um, hence why he was so upset when she played her idol, because he knew he was the only other option, at least from what he was aware of. So the fact that Denise played the idol on him, I think, just kind of strengthens that bond that they have. And like I said, I think I mentioned it last week, it would be awesome to see a Denise, Jeremy, and Kim like trio and see how far they can go. But if it's just Denise and Jeremy and they stick together with who they were tight with initially, so if we get Michelle and Adam and the four of them, I mean, that would be... uh quite a team as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to what happens next week. Uh, I will say my third highlight, I, 
it's regards to, I think it's f- fair to say that uh, there are criticisms to certain elements in the Survivor. Um, whether you believe there are too many advantages in the game, or if you feel Edge of Extinction isn't worthy of another visit in the future, I will have to say, fire tokens have already paid off, in my opinion. Um, they've added this element of strategy that clearly played out in this episode, and not just between Denise and Sandra. You had that moment with Parvati and Wendell basically negotiating, and what seemed like Wendell was just bluffing to earn Parvati's fire tokens, so that way he could then vote her off. Um, it, I would be interested to know if something happened at Tribal Council, if Parvati said a name or said, okay, as soon as this is, tribal's done and I'm still here, I give you both. Uh, I'd be interested to know if push came to shove, what would happen? But it didn't seem like neither person was willing to go to that point where they make a decision on a person other than Wendell or Parvati. Um, so I think with the fire tokens, you, you had Sandra, you know, bartering her fire tokens for, or bartering four fire tokens with her hidden immunity idol. And and with that, Denise negotiated using the, uh, I'll, I'll give one away up front and give you one if I'm still here. And with Sandra voted out, she still hangs on to a fire token. And perhaps that lets her buy an advantage later. Uh, plus you have Tyson <laughs> finding an advantage, uh, selling it to Parvati, and then immediately using that fire token to buy peanut butter. I think his thought process totally makes sense. Buy food to give you strength to go at, after more of these challenges to earn more fire tokens and help you get back in the game. I I like it. I think at first you're like peanut butter. And as he's talking it out, it's like, that makes complete sense. You know, I think he understands what he needs and it, you know, it clearly made him happy. And he said he liked the element of being sneaky and, um, now I think if you can put yourself in an element where you're comfortable out in a game that's clearly made to make you uncomfortable, I think that gives you an edge. No pun, no edge of extinction pun. I clearly just think, uh, I think Tyson's in the right frame of mind. Go with your gut in that situation, buying peanut butter, and I think it's a good move. Okay, prediction. Uh, so. In my draft, I mentioned I have three of my five players left on the same tribe. And based on the promo, you know, you'd have to guess that they go one. Are they going to go one more vote off before bringing someone back from EOE? Um, I mean, they showed Jeremy questioning Tony, I believe, in the trailer for next week's episode. So is that a smokescreen or is it like when they previewed Adam, I think, going after Boston Rob and then in that next episode that their tribe went to tribal council. Um, I'll have to say, I'll go with what we saw in the commercial and say that the call goes back and Tony gets sent packing. Uh, Cause I, I think again, Kim, I'll have her, I'll say she goes with Jeremy and Denise. Um, and plus I'll throw another, uh, guess in there. I bet Denise finds another idol when another one's put in play on their beach. I think after such a huge episode, she has this amazing moment and I think that's just going to continue with her getting into this amazing group. Uh, And since she already found an idol, I I think a lot happens in recent history of Survivor. I think there's a lot of repeats in there. So I think she'll do it again next week uh, once another one's put back in play. which would be outstanding to see. Okay, Uh, that's it for me this week. Uh, Thank you for taking time to listen. If you want to keep tabs on this podcast, head over to whinyparent.com to follow our blog, which then you'll receive updates whenever we post something new. Um, Again, thank you for taking time to listen. Uh, 
Next week will be episode seven. So that'll be the seventh podcast for Survivor. Um, don't forget, I'm also doing recaps of Fringe uh, season one, where I've done the first two episodes so far, and I will be continuing along with that as well. Um, okay. Thanks for listening. Until next time, I'll see everyone later. Okay, bye.